What's up guys, welcome back to Fisher Hex. Today we're gonna to be doing a rambling video. And yes, it's been a little while since I posted this type of content. With my new posting schedule being Monday and Wednesday and possibly a third video on Friday, I don't always have the ability to get this content in the mix because there are still a list of many, many things I have to make videos on. So yeah, it's just kind of a work in progress. But uh, with that said, I do have a list of things I wanna go over uh, regarding the quarantine tank from my last video, contest stuff, the new website that's going up. I mean, there's a list, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing here is the 20,000 subscriber contest, which is going to end this Friday, November 9th. So if you haven't submitted your video or you haven't put a purchase on my website for that second drawing, definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, I will link the contest video in the description or maybe in the comment section. For those of you who uh, missed that video, you can check it out and look, all the, look at everything you got to do to be part of the contest and what I'm actually giving away. So, uh, yeah, that's all set. The next thing here is my uh, new website, Reefer on Call, will be uh, going live this Wednesday. So two days from now, that will be the whole uh, live um, chatting that you can do with experts within the community. One will be me, and then the other one will be Mythic Reef, and then we'll be adding more as the volume comes in. But uh, this will be a monthly subscription. I talked about it in a previous video, and Wednesday I will do a full in-depth video on the website show you everything about it the perks and all that good stuff uh, which will be included in your membership so stay tuned for that video which will be out again this wednesday now speaking of websites i am in the process of revamping the shipping on my uh, personal site fishofhex.com and basically instead of having a flat rate for the united states of being uh, it was 29.99 i went up to 34.99 to try to help compensate for all the money I was losing sending shipments out west to California and stuff like that. Um, unfortunately, those shipments at minimum are usually $37 up to $45, even more depending on how many frags you get. And it can get very expensive and I start losing a, quite a bit of money um, when I'm shipping out west. So I decided to go ahead and break the country up into zones. So for those of you who are like in the surrounding states, you'll be paying like $15 to $20 depending on where you live. And then Obviously, the farther out west you go, the more you're going to have to pay. I am still working on what I want my uh, California and stuff like that to be. I'm still going in and trying zip codes in different in different parts of the uh, state to determine what the average is to ship out there. So I don't mind losing a few bucks here and there, but I'm losing like twenty, twenty five dollars when it comes to shipping. That's just not something I'm willing to to deal with. So. And uh, I mean, I've dealt with it for the last year and a half, and I've kept my prices on my coral the same, but I'm. When I'm doing the booking at the end of the month or I'm going over the books, I am seeing that I'm losing too much money profit-wise when I take those bigger hits. So if I keep the price basically the same and I take a hit on shipping all the time, I'm going to have to increase the price of my coral to help compensate that, compensate for that. So instead, I decided to go ahead and do the zoning, which just requires me to go in. I'm making a map right now. It would be a pain to do the color and basically break up the pricing. And then I got to go in and do all the programming in Shopify through uh, Parsify. So I got to do all that this week, and hopefully it'll be done by Friday. I'll keep you guys in the loop because I still have to go through and show you guys everything that I did on the website. I added a whole, bu whole bunch of dif different sections and builds and stuff. So it's just a work in progress. So, yeah, stay tuned for that, and I'll keep you guys in the loop. All right, so the last thing that's actually on my list before I start going off on some random topics for the next five or 10 minutes is the copper test results for the Fox Face's old QT tank. Now, if you saw the previous video, I mentioned in there that uh, the Fox Face was in a full dose of Coopermine for four weeks and still showed signs of ick. And yes, I confirmed it with other hobbyists that it is definitely ick, not flukes. And, uh, you know, it just sucks. Um, so basically what I did is I went ahead and ordered the a Hanna copper test kit just to confirm the levels. I've been using the API test kit just because it's cheaper and it does show some some uh, type of copper in the solution. But with that color differences, it's just not very accurate. And I wanted to make sure that the Cooper mean that I was currently using was still uh, good and, and going to do its job. And uh, after that, the, basically the results came back as 0.73. The recommended is 0.50. So that means that the level of concentration is definitely good because it is a little bit higher. As I mentioned in the video, I did dose, um, I recommended dose plus some, uh, just because I did think that it wasn't a very potent. But turned out that it was fine, and his strain of ick, unfortunately, is immune to copper, or at least that's what I'm kind of drawing all the conclusions to. And uh, yeah, so he's in hyposalinity right now, and so didn't so aren't all the other tanks that I have in quarantine that I plan on putting into the 300. I put everybody into hypo because uh, they've all been part of that original batch of fish, and I'm just not messing with anything and taking any chances. So everybody's in hypo. They're doing pretty good. They're going to spend the next couple weeks in there. Then we're going to bring them up, uh, observe them for a little bit. I might do an, a second dose of copper for 14 days and then get them into the 300. So we'll see how everything turns out. But right now, keep your fingers crossed. Everything is doing quite well. 
and uh, hopefully we'll have them in the tank soon enough. Well, that's it for the list of things that I have to talk about. Now, moving on to some things that's kind of going on. I went uh, turkey hunting on Saturday, this past Saturday. Um, I didn't see anything. Uh, there's public land. Turkey hunting's definitely a pain in the butt. I didn't do any scouting for turkey. It was a last minute thing. I don't. I'm not really a big fan of the hunting it, hunting turkey, but I just wanted to get out in the woods and kind of get some peace and quiet. So I just went out um, and went to some spots where I heard some when I was hunting for deer. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Unfortunately, it's just it doesn't work like that in public land, especially with turkeys. You really gotta do the scouting, find the roost, get away from them, have them come down, call them to you. It's just a process. And like I said, I didn't do any scouting for them. So I really, I went out there with high hopes, but I kind of knew that I didn't do my research. And as with everything, if you don't do your research, you're really not gonna, you're not gonna get far. So uh, either way, I had a great time. I got stuck in the mud with a truck for a little bit, which gave me an awesome opportunity to use the four wheel drive, which I definitely enjoyed. Um, yeah, so that was, that was a plus too. All right, the next thing here is dosing nitrates and phosphates to the 300. Now, uh, I've been doing it over the last couple weeks. I think I mentioned in a previous video that I was going to do it. I don't remember. Uh, but either way, I went ahead and actually picked up some Brightwell Aquatics Neophos and the Neo Nitro, but I've yet to use them. Um, I'm going to uh, do some tests on those particular products to see how potent, potent they are, but I'm actually using my um, Greenleaf Aquatics um, potassium nitrate, the KNO3, and the monopotassium phosphate, which is the KH2PO4. So I've been using those with my own mixture of a 500 milliliter bottle of RO. I'm going through the whole process of calculating what my tank uses up with nitrates and phosphates every day and trying to keep a um, con consistent level with about three to five ppm of nitrates and about uh, 0 0.05 to uh, 0.15 of phosphate. So those are the acceptable ranges. I'm keeping that in right now. And I'll tell you, after about a week, week and a half of doing this, I've seen big differences in color on my Acropora. Um, the reason why I went this route, as I mentioned in other videos, is that I just don't have enough fish. Uh, no matter how much I feed this tank, I cannot get nitrates up. Uh, with my older systems and previous tanks, I just kind of left it alone, never really thought about it, tested nitrates every once in a while. But with the new technology and the fact that I have a really powerful skimmer on this system and, then, and that is bare bottom, Basically, uh, I haven't seen nitrates in this tank for about eight months. It's approaching its one-year mark, or it's about that right now. Um, but really, eight months, zero nitrates, and that definitely is not a good thing for the tank. So um, I'll do a whole video breaking down how I dose with this stuff uh, because it is definitely cheaper to go with the Greenleaf Aquatics. I think I get... Um, probably 50 5500 milliliter bottles uh, for like three or four bucks opposed to one 500 milliliter bottle of the brightwell stuff for like eight or nine dollars so i'll break down everything and i'll show you both routes if you so choose to go the lazier route with brightwell aquatics if you got disposable income or go the cheaper route the more diy stuff with the greenleaf aquatics so i'll show you guys all that stuff show you the results before and afters and go through everything but i really want to give it a month or so and talk about some other changes that I made to the 300 um, because the tank is doing quite well. I've uh, cut a bunch of frags. I've cut a bunch of acros out of it because they were really growing into each other and pissing everybody off. So I cut a bunch of stuff, put it on a frag rack. Um, a lot of it's already spoken for, but I will be taking pictures and putting it up on the website within hopefully the next week, week and a half. That way you guys can purchase from it. And uh, the reason why I'm keeping them in the 300 is because I get the best coloration and the best, best growth with the 300s uh, water parameters. Um, I, I've taken my acros out of my 300 and put them into the frag tank. It's night and day difference. Uh, the frag tank is, is a good system, it's solid, but it's got too many swings and not enough stability because of everything coming in and out. And um, I just don't wanna deal with that with the acros that I cut from the 300. I'd rather them look really good, do really well in the current water, and then just sell them off of a rack that's sitting on the back wall. All right, so the last thing I want to talk about is the 125 gallon planted tank. It just hit four months old and it is doing pretty awesome. It was rough in the beginning with the excess nutrients with that uh, that new substrate that I was trying out. Um, if you guys saw that build video, I mentioned that I was using a new natural substrate, an organic substrate, because my usual organic choice potting mix from uh, Miracle Grow is no longer available. So I had to try something new. And uh, as I mentioned, I should have actually soaked that dirt or that substrate for a couple weeks doing some big water changes to help remove some of that excess nutrients i did not do that and i kind of suffer the consequences for the first month and a half of this build but now it's great that nutrients have been removed because the plant growth is kind of taken off and really sucking up that stuff and uh, i went three weeks without cutting any of the liquidia 
and you guys can see that it got pretty ridiculous and pretty full. So I went ahead and uh, in that update video, that four month old video or whatever you want to call it, I'm going to uh, show you guys the before and after kind of the livestock and then do a big haircut on that uh, tank and show you guys what it looks like afterwards. So, yep, love the planted tank. It's a really easy system. It doesn't even evaporate water because of the glass lids and the sump is also closed with some acrylic. So it doesn't evaporate water. I have to go in there and pull out some leaves from the overflow every few days, but that's it. It's an awesome system. Um, definitely got to get more fish and uh, yeah, we'll see what it looks like in the next year or so. Well, guys, that's about it for this video. If you have any questions about any of the topics I discussed, go ahead and put that in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you. Um, now, I do want to mention that I am actively trying to spend an hour every day, either in the morning or at night, to get into my comment section and answer questions. I, if you guys have been asking them, I'm really trying to get in there and answer them. Now, one thing I have noticed, it might be a glitch of my creator studio, but if you're asking questions on old videos, like one of the popular videos that I get questions all the time is the 30 things a video, um, basically mistakes that I made. It's probably my most popular video on the channel. But either way, when I go to approve those questions and I go to answer them, I can't find them. So I don't know what the deal is. They don't refresh on my studio, which in turn I have to go through and try to find the video and then go through the comment. It's just a huge pain. So I do apologize for that. So ask all your questions on recent videos and then we'll have a better chance of getting it answered. All right. Either way, I will see you guys later Wednesday. Yeah. See you Wednesday. Peace.